Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another Goodwood Road and Racing podcast. And my goodness me, have we got a couple of great guys here right now. BMW teammates in 1985 and 1986 with Schnitzer. Uh, certainly Schnitzer in 86, wasn't it? Yes, I, I thought you were going to say we got the future of motor racing uh, well, here. I, I just, <laughs> the thing was, I would love to say that, but it's so not true, is it? <laughs> uh, anyway, Manuel Ipiro, Gerhard Berger with us uh, for the next 20 odd minutes. Fantastic. Thank you so much, guys, for coming in. Good morning. Um, good morning, <laughs> yes. Um, this is great. Both of you back in a BMW for the Jerry Marshall Trophy here at the 74th Members Meeting at Goodwood. How did all this come about? I thought you were. I thought you decided to stay on the beach now. Yes, but I got a telephone call and uh, Charles says to me, why are you not coming to the Members Meeting? And then when I've been last time here in the revival, Emanuele explained me a little bit uh, this uh, meeting and uh, I started to be half convinced but then uh, suddenly there was a car available and Emanuele said well uh, he would like to drive with me and I uh, said well so that's a reason to come here I anyway love to come here to Goodwood I think whenever you come here it's it's a good experience it's uh, great fun and it's good motor racing so uh, it took me just a couple of minutes to say yes and uh, that's why I am here uh, for the sake of the record as we are on a podcast, there is one of us with an Italian accent and one of us with an um, Austrian accent. So I leave to the, to the spectators to guess who is who when we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes I, think, I think we'll be okay with that. But, really. <laughs> but you, did you, how much work did you have to do on Gerhardt to make this happen? No, I won't do. Now, honestly, uh, I'm really, really happy that we drive together because we, we share uh, a good part of our motor racing life and I think we share the same feeling towards motor racing. We share passion, uh, we share uh, an attitude which I don't want to say is no longer there but we were blessed to to have this attitude towards racing. So maximum attack, maximum commitment but also uh, good enjoyment and, and, and good time and we raced together in Formula 3 then with BMW. Yeah. Uh, I have been my whole career a big fan of Gerard because he's, he's done an incredible career early in Formula One so I always saw him a little bit from behind but uh, my feelings towards Gerard have always been really good and uh, and then actually I've been his test driver in the McLaren days um, a little bit uh, later. Thank you, Emanuele. No, it's it's your, your, time, you, your time for Start some compliments. Cry. Start to cry. <laughs> Welcome to the Gerhard Berger fan club. Start yes. to cry. <laughs> but uh, it's exactly what Emanuele says. It's not so much uh, to, to race here uh, this weekend. For me, it's, it's unbelievable when you spend in a racing career time on the racetrack or in the same team, in the same car as we did, or just wheel on wheel, for so many years you build up a kind of relationship where even if in the time you fight against each other but somehow uh, this is one of you guys and I feel this very much especially uh, with Emanuele, with Roberto Ravaglia and I haven't seen Roberto, I see him once a year maybe and I haven't been close with him for 15 years but I think when he needs something, or when I would be always there, simply because we've been, we, 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 we yeah. spend time and I think we, we fight each other in moments where we've been in a very risky situation and, and, and this somehow connects to each other, even if you are, I, even if you, if you are competitors. Sure. And, but with, with Emilia, Emanuele and me, we, we've been competitors, but then we also been together in the same boat and <laughs> as he mentioned before, we had one fantastic race in Spa, 24 hours with Schnitzer, our dream team. It's his dream, dream my dream team. Yeah. And we lead 23 and a half hours. Um, I think we've been ahead, uh, one lap ahead, and everything was clear to win this race. And the last half an hour, the, the, uh, something broke on the car. And, uh, but uh, this is all things where you love to remember, and, and, and it puts you very close together. Can it be a sign that we're getting old, or you no, think we're I don't fine? I'm fine. sorry, I didn't quite <laughs> <get> <laughs> <it>. <laughs> No, uh, one thing, um, I think sharing a car together is, is a very special thing, especially if you do it in a very professional environment like 
uh, schnitzer was at the time or, or like I've been blessed to do it with Audi later on in yeah, the days yeah. uh, uh, for instance with Frank Biller you build up a really special relation relationship because racing drivers have got uh, a big ego we are very selfish and it's really not easy to find this altruism a constructive altruism to uh, to push but also think about the other especially in those days you could not of course you had to drive as fast as possible but you also had to think a little bit about not being too brutal with the car um, and and with Schnitzer, because of the the way the team was working and the attitude, we were very much focused on that. So it was a uh, uh, very aggressive, positive attitude and and good attitude. And uh, these were good days. I mean, really good days. It but what uh, what is it's great on the whole thing is that uh, actually with with Charles March we we found somebody. Uh, connecting each other again yeah. because he gives us a platform here of course it's his business but at the same time he treats us in such a nice way we, we stay in his home we we can bring our families together we our children's together and 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 this is such a an, an unbelievable ambient um, that uh, that's that's really a privilege and that's why we really take care about it and whenever we can come over here we we do it because um, that's not always happen I think this is Gerhard. I mean, you experienced for many years the intense pressure of for being at the top of Formula One. I mean, boy, that you know that is big, big pressure. I have even more pressure now because he <laughs> tells me all the time I should go quick. I should not. <laughs> I, I should not destroy his race. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel more more pressure of him than of Enzo Ferrari at the time. <laughs> We, we also have to remember, don't we, that um, the most important thing is to be quicker than your teammate, isn't no, it? No, not now. But no, just let me say the, the, the big jewel of this event and the true jewel are the spectators. Because really, without the enthusiasm of so many people yeah. coming here, yeah. we wouldn't be here. And, and this is not... Uh, uh, I really mean it. it when you walk in the paddock, uh, I've been coming, and this is probably why Gerard, I, I was able, able to convince Gerard b through my enthusiasm. I've been coming here many times, and uh, you really feel like there's so, many, so much support and so much yeah. passion that yeah. people share with you. And they really give you the motivation and they really make it happen. And uh, we are, let's say the key probably of, of the future is in, our, in a way in our hands, because we have to make sure that we keep uh, bringing and keeping this passion and transmitting this yeah. passion yeah. Uh, as much as possible. Th there's but, but also when you talk about the passion and the fans here, for me, Britain is unbelievable on this side. It's nowhere in the world existing. I mean, yes, you, you have countries where you have a lot of fans where they are way behind racing, but, but when you come to Britain, it's so different. I mean, you see families uh, preparing race cars <laughs> You cannot believe it, you know, and which passion they have and which enthusiasm they have and, and how much uh, effort they put in that when you come here, you love to be one of them. There was a car with a picnic that I saw in the parking. It's so cool, you know, with the table, everything set up. Yeah. I took a photo. It's really cool. Yeah, Only yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. How, Gerhard, how many tenths back from your best are you when you tackle a track like this in, in, the, in a BMW 530i like you are? You know, this car is not set up like a you know the perfect racing car well i i have to say this weekend I'm, I'm quite a bit off because i haven't run since long time i just go into the car did a couple of laps and um and i didn't feel to 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 go over the top because um it's it's so much passion of these people about preparing these cars and it's a it's a historic car and 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 you have a teammate what uh, what also take care about it so it's more to drive it quick smooth and quick and finishing it um, but we was talking the other day of course we start to slowly to lose the the, the reaction time a little bit and uh, and it's getting more and more difficult to but find the right breaking point. But this was a confidential conversation. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah but it's the truth and I always tell the truth you know. <laughs> but no but it's 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 coming to your question we are not the same than we've been he's a bit closer to his career I'm already uh, quite a bit off but we still like to do it and I still when they when we push them we are not so far off okay. what uh, I think the historic racing for me is about the pleasure of driving 
the best way you can in terms of style within yourself. So what is missing in, in comparison to uh, the normal racing is this uh, finding the, the last edge. And this I will never do because otherwise it's, it's another game and I, I don't yeah. want to do it. So respecting the car, trying to drive every car to understand the language of the car and driving the best you can. But if you're looking for the fighting spirit and the last tenth, which gives you a lot of pleasure in normal racing, you know, this very last risk that you take, you cannot do it. And if you start doing it, you, I think you are doing the wrong sport. I'm a bit slow this weekend, but now I understand my problem with you voting because the language, it, uh, my car speaks Japanese to me at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I'm, why I'm a bit struggling. <laughs> I have to change the language. <laughs> Go back to <laughs> Do you well, run out of questions? Normally you have a no, lot no, of questions. No, no, I, I wasn't. I, <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was, just, I was think, actually thinking about McLaren Honda when you were talking about Japanese. I mean, you should... <laughs> You, you should be familiar with a bit of Japanese. Yeah, I missing. <laughs> Can we talk a, a little bit about um, f modern Formula One for a moment? Uh, because this weekend is the Australian Grand Prix. We, we saw a disappointing qualifying session. We, very we, sl we slept. We, have to, we fit for the race today. We slept. Can you tell us how it was working? <laughs> Gerhard, I mean, Formula One gave you so much success, made you a huge, big star name. And when we look at it now, it's disappointing, isn't it? Well, I have to say this morning the race wasn't disappointing. This morning was quite a good race, I yeah. would say. It was quite interesting. Obviously, at the beginning of the season, there's a lot of yeah. uh, uh, unknown things coming to the table, and then you, you, you get a little bit of picture. But um, let's give it a good chance. Last year, it was... A little bit boring. It was too, pr uh, too, too. Uh, <coughs> you know already before what's going to happen, or most of the time you know before what happened. But uh, let's give it a chance this year, and it looked quite promising this morning. Even, even if Mercedes is clearly still the mm. the benchmark, mm. but um, Ferrari is a bit closer. Red Bull is a bit closer. Toro Rosso did a good job. Mm. Uh, yeah. y your old team, Toro Rosso, they're looking good. Yeah. They, they did a good job this morning. Unfortunately, then with the beat stop and so they lost mm. a bit. But uh, uh, they they have definitely a quite good car. And talk about the new kid on the block, Verstappen. I mean, the guy. Li <laughs> yeah, he sure he made a bit again a good show this morning. He's a good kid, and he he, he will be uh, he will be one of the future stars. Yeah, for sure. And well, uh, do you still watch Formula One or? Yeah, actually. We decided to watch it together, Geran and I, and um, I was like 10 minutes before he Just came Just 10 down. minutes, I thought yeah. you was already, <laughs> I was already feeling so bad because I said, well, he's already one hour. At 4.45 I was years. down and uh, he only made it for the start. But uh, yeah, I watch it for, for many reasons, for passion, of course, but also because uh, uh, three or four races a year I'm a racing steward, so I have to be updated. And um, what I saw this morning, for me, what I don't like about modern, modern racing is predictability because things are so perfect sure. that uh, there are no um, unpredictable things happening. So the first race of the season, when people didn't really know so much about tires, for instance, so Ferrari tried another strategy, uh, setup of the car was not optimum. It produced a good race. The start of the Mercedes was not so good because they just did not have enough practice. So in the older days, the perfection was um, uh, further from 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 being top, so um, things were mixed up. You know, now when if in an ideal world, if you have a, a tenth advantage and you use your material at your very best, you always keep this tenth of advantage, and then things are boring. So the first race of the season was good because people made some mistakes and yeah. there were some question mark. I'm sure Ferrari would not have done this strategy if uh, it was the third or fourth race of the season because they knew the tires better. Yeah. So everything is too perfect right now. Agreed, agreed. Um, f it would be good though, wouldn't it, if Ferrari could get right back at uh, Mercedes this year. We want to see, uh, don't you think all of us, I mean, the sport needs Ferrari, Gerhard, doesn't it? Uh, no question, I mean, uh, to see uh, a winning Ferrari would be great. But we've seen already with uh, Michael at the time, uh, se where one season after the next season, Ferrari was winning. I think what we need is different winners. 
And I couldn't agree more with Emanuele when he says uh, it's too predictable. And um, especially when you come back to all the days where cars stopped, one had a brake yeah. problem, one had a run out of fuel, yeah. one ran, had a gearbox problem in the last <coughs> lap, one had. So this is all not happening anymore. So normally, especially when we look back to last year, first corner, who is first, first corner, uh, Hamilton is first, so you know who's going to win. This is something what we don't like to see. We, I think the fans. Uh, they love Ferrari, but it's not just about Ferrari. I think if a Doro Rosso wins, if a yeah, um, newcomer wins, yeah. if a Red Bull wins, or then again a Mercedes wins, that's yeah. what, what people like to see. Yeah. In the older days, uh, when you did not have a good qualifying, you thought, okay, I'm going to do a really good start tomorrow and make up some positions. And okay, now it's good with the new start system because it's more down to the driver, but before basically you couldn't gain anything then if it, if the start wasn't very good you thought okay maybe a few guys in front will blow up so i can make a good race so you had some hopes if if everything runs perfectly then you can't you can't hope you know you are sure. third or you are that's whatever it. It. and yeah. that's it yeah okay let's uh, let's let's finish by coming back to goodwood and the members meeting now manueli what's your advice for gerhardt this afternoon um, my advice, not for the afternoon, but for good, is to keep this attitude. I'm really pleased that, uh, because um, unfortunately I never experienced being a superstar like uh, like <laughs> Gerard. Um, but I, I think Formula One, for done for many years, can make can spoil a little bit you. And and uh, I <laughs> think if if you fly very very high then you can't appreciate the essence of events like this. So I'm really pleased that um, it didn't take very long to convince Gerard. And honestly, I'm really pleased that he really enjoys this because some really big guns, they lose, they never experience this joy and pleasure of just uh, enjoying something. You know, we were walking here and there was this smell of the two-stroke motorbikes, <laughs> uh, how good it is, you know. I wonder whether, I don't want to mention names, but uh, some big guns will ever have this pleasure. So my advice for Gerard is uh, keep following me, keep following my Stay heart, my Stay heart, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, we'll have some fun. How is it, how's it going with the driver change? Have, uh, any, have you done any practice? Of course, we take it serious. So <laughs> we really did some practice this morning. And I have to say, um, <laughs> first, I'm not more superstar than Emanuele. We've been, we had so many years a ca parallel career, yeah. and of course, I've been a bit lucky and, uh, luckier in some stages, got in to some uh, great Formula One teams, great Formula One cars, and maybe had then the possibility to had uh, a couple of success out there. But in the end of the day, we we we've been always on a similar level. One time him in front, one time me in front, but didn't really matter. But where he is. A long way ahead of me and where I am really a, a fan of you is <laughs> that you, you bring so much more passion into me to the whole thing and I have to catch up because it's our sport. This is where we, we make our living. This is what we dream from our child's on. Yeah, and yeah, you yeah. know, it's so easy when you are when you're then drifting away and starting to do other business and things, but in the end of the day all what I like, what we like is to come to a place like this, try to drive a car on the limit and being with the fans and that's exactly what you said before nobody in our Come business to the should podcast lose it. on time really, <laughs> you know no. yeah i would be in time but you didn't tell me <laughs> early enough you can see their teammates can't you yeah. yeah absolutely okay well i hope you have a fantastic race in the jerry marshall trophy in the bmw um it's great to see you thank you very much thank for you. coming uh, there is a rumor going round that you and Nicky Lauda might race here in September at the Revival. Is there anything you can say about this? Well, I cannot say a lot about it. Uh, I just can say that uh, I mentioned it once. And uh, let's see if uh, something comes out of it. It would be exciting, wouldn't it? And well, let's see if we can back up the passion of, of Nicky. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Anyway, Manuel Ipiro, Gerhard Berger, thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. And uh, we'll be back with you for another Goodwood Road and Racing podcast uh, very soon. Thank you for joining us. Bye-bye. <laughs>